So at the weekend, we had the death of uh, Iranian President Ibrahim Raisi. Tom, do you think he'll be missed by the uh, Iranian people or by the? Well, certainly not by the thousands of dissidents that he sent to their death. Certainly not by the hundreds upon hundreds of women who have been arrested and brutalized at protests as part of the Women Life Freedom Movement. Um, I mean, he's directly responsible, really, uh, in a sense, for the death of Masa Amini, the um, mm. Iranian Kurd who, for not wearing her hijab quite correctly, she was wearing it, but just not yeah. correctly, was effectively um, sent to her death. This is um, such a horrendous, tyrannical individual. And it's been striking to see the sort of responses to it because, I mean, you've got Hezbollah and Hamas, you know, passing on their condolences. That's to be expected. But to see, you know, the UN having a minute of silence and the <laughs> flag at half mast and the BBC putting out an obituary which gestured to his sort of complicated legacy because, yeah. yes, he brutalised all of these people. But, you know, he introduced some good social reforms. He was he was a good guy, really. It really reminded he me of when... He cut a backlog in court cases. He did. He did. Which, um, you, know, <laughs> we, you know, look at our backlog at the moment. Yeah. So who are we to judge? Um, <laughs> it really reminded me of, was it the Washington Post who after... Uh, Mm -hmm. Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, the leader of ISIS, was killed. Um, they referred to him as a austere religious scholar. <laughs> <laughs> and there, I think there is something to this, which is that um, sort of Western mainstream media, as well as sort of progressive circles generally, they have this real sort of stutter that sets in whenever they have to talk about Islamist regimes. Mm. They're very comfortable criticising almost any other type of regime. But for whatever reason, where... Islamism comes into the equation, they can't quite get the words out. Yeah. And I think you've seen it in relation to the, the silence on the women life freedom protest generally. And the reasons for it are quite obvious, I think. First of all, is that they have this sort of bigotry of low expectations, which has now been applied like geopolitically. So because the, in the stupid schema that they have, Muslims are forever the underdogs, even if they're part of an Islamist regime who yeah. are tyrannizing their own people. I think that plays into it. They feel like they're going to feed some sort of Islamophobic narrative if you criticize these regimes too harshly. And then it's also interacts with that sort of phony anti-imperialism they have, yeah. which is now just really anti-Westernism, which is they're bothered by repressive states if, the, if you can trace the trail of breadcrumbs back to Washington, D.C., mm. if they're being propped up by the mm. U.S., if they're being funded by the U.S., if they're an ally of the U.S. But if it's a regime doing it if it's of their own accord, they just don't really care. Yeah. It's particularly if they're a state like Iran, which has sort of tried to position itself um, very cynically as the kind of challenge to Western hegemony in that part of the world. Mm. So I think what was interesting in the, the, the slightly strange, confused, muddled reaction to his death, I'm not saying people should be, you know, take to Twitter to openly celebrate it, but even no. the mealy mouthness I think was interesting and revealed a lot of those sort of trends that we see. Yeah. And, you know, Graham, um, Tom brought up the anti-hijab protests. You, you, you'd think that that is, the morals there are so clear cut. These are, you know, women protesting for their freedom, being attacked and repressed by the state for it. And yet there is this kind of, um, there hasn't been the kind of solidarity you'd hope for from Westerners, from whether that's Western feminists or Westerners generally. What do you, what do you make of that? I mean, it's... Well, uh, you know, some, one of the one of the regular features we have in our website is a weekly roundup of of stories in the gender you know world and mm. uh we call it the war on women yeah. you know and i i don't think that's i mean i'm given to hyper hyperbole but i don't think that's hyperbole yeah. i think it is a war on women i think for instance that after october 7th it wouldn't mm. have been possible for people to come out in the streets supporting palestine before israel had even mounted a response yeah um uh without uh, what has been a steady uh, chipping away at how much we value women in society. We've had like years of things like women being called white women to mm. try and shut them up. Um, there's been all sorts of these little things picking at people. As I say, the demoralizing effect of all this, the fact that that we can't get people to care about women in prison with sex offenders, it's very demoralizing. And I would imagine it's similar to how people living under the uh, Iranian regime, which was not always a theocratic mm. regime. We, we've allowed our idea of women to become degraded, whereby, mm. you know, not even, it's considered rude to say the word in NHS documents, mm. you know?